Okay, so the market is more or less red. And I think how this differs from last week is that you don't, it's not really repositioning so much as it really is capitulation. I do want to remind everybody that we have this ridiculous number of companies reporting earnings over the next two weeks. And so what I think is actually happening here is just a pause, a buyer strike in front of the FOMC meeting, as well as just, um, you know, just waiting for the market to uh, kind of come in a bit. I would not necessarily be shorting into this market. And in fact, for me, um, most of today, what I've been doing is actually covering shorts that I've had. Um, luckily, I did have actually quite a lot of short exposure on, so covering isn't such a big deal. Um, I would uh, put, I would remind you guys that we do have a Discord for all um, subscribers. And in the Discord, there's a ton of information there that I post kind of before and after the um, um, the meetings. Um, one of the things I want to talk about because both the um, algo a few weeks ago and also we talked about it fundamentally as a short um, and that really is forward and um, additionally to a, to some extent as well GM to a lesser extent really Tesla because Tesla is kind of its own animal but we did have the um, railway companies reporting very clearly that the semiconductor chip shortage is is a problem and that it's a problem that probably persists through the second quarter. So they're really not looking for um, a, an uptick year over year in the amount of cars that actually end up on the railways to be shipped until the third quarter. So uh, some improvement in the second quarter, but not a positive uptick year over year. Um, we see now that Ford is halting orders for the next pickup. I do think that they'll be able to get good pricing. So it is a little dangerous to be short these too much into earnings, but I definitely um, would probably stay out of it if you are not already short. If you are short, I would look to hold it for a little bit, but then cover it um, because you do um, have semis, some of the semis reporting midweek. And um, I, I, it's a, the thing with these guys is they will probably be able to get pricing. Used car, we anticipate from CPI to still show a very strong number for used and new car sales and what that implies as relates to inflation. Really, you're looking for the June period for that to finally alleviate within the inflation numbers. So for now, um, I would just very gently peel out of any kind of Ford short. It, you should already be profitable on it at this point. Um, but um, wouldn't go too much farther on that. Um, additionally, um, Activision, I would just mention as well, um, it is actually traded down and held the $80 level. Uh, you really can just buy calls on it at the $80 level. I would look to do six months out. And the reason I would look to do that is because I don't think there's any risk to this deal. So this sale, selling of Activision at 80 bucks is just people raising capital at the moment. I mean, this is an all cash deal. It will close at $95. You will collect $15, which is a little bit under a 20% return, probably for about six months of holding. If I'm wrong, it's nine months of holding, but you still have the stock moving up. Um, it's one of the safer places, I think, right now to put capital if you want to put capital to work. Um, so I continue to reiterate that. And then crude oil um, has actually been holding up pretty well. I wanted to just discuss the Ukraine stuff. Uh, there is an article out that President Biden is working with Scandinavian countries to um, create a backup plan in case Ukraine uh, does decide to um, if, if they do invade the Ukraine, um, that we would have we would support Europe by providing oil and that we would start the agreements that would need to be in place for um, Qatar, also called Qatar, which I think is actually the correct pronunciation, but everybody in the Western world calls that country Qatar, so it is what it is. Um, and then in um, Scandinavia, the, the Black Sea up there, or sorry, the North Sea, uh, which is primarily Sweden and some of the other Scandinavian countries to a lesser extent also port in oil throughout uh, Central and um, the Western, the, the uh, Eastern part of Western Europe. So um, that's being said, and I think that's what's making the price of crude a little bit weak today when, in fact, um, it doesn't matter how much we try to pull tankers across the United States. If Russia invades the Ukraine, it's negative for um, 
well, it's positive for the price of oil, but there's, you're not going to be able to get enough oil across. And on top of it, if you just look at a map, which I wish I would have prepared, but it's a little busy this morning trying to figure out how much short exposure I wanted to have. Um, but the point is, is that it's, it's um, um, any kind of conflict escalation of Russia coming into the Ukraine, no matter what we try to do, is not going to be enough to uh, get this price of oil below 80 and as long as that persists, XLE is still a good bet. Um, you know, EOG is still a good bet because the fact is, if we start exporting that gas as a way to help Europe through its little trouble here with the Ukraine, then we will have a shortage of nat gas in the United States because we are not creating enough nat gas to meet our domestic. Well, we are. We're a net exporter, but we, you know, um, it's just not good, is what I'm saying. So. Um, I would continue to take opportunities here to get exposure to EOG, XLE, um, and, and continue forth. Additionally, uh, Freeport McNamara is going to, uh, McMoran is going to report earnings um, coming up here fairly shortly. Uh, this is in equities a way to get exposure to gold down 6%. Again, as I mentioned, these, like the whole market being what it is, it is at 38 bucks, you should just just buy equities. You should not be trying to do options so aggressively on it. If you wanted to, you could probably put them in for 38 bucks and then um, just enjoy the, the ramp up because Freeport Mac, Mac Moran um, being one of the um, existing copper mines that actually has mines open within copper um, is a, it's absolutely a, a green play. I think the world is going to start to realize that copper is the only way that you uh, get uh, less dependency on fossil fuels, and also it is uh, pure. It is an equity play on gold. Um, Beto, interestingly enough, we had talked about that you, if you were going to buy it, you should buy the 24s, but then also adequately buy enough puts to cover it. And there, I really want to talk about delta adjustment. Um, that actually has worked out really well. I went ahead and covered some of the puts that I had. So I, because the delta on this week's um, 23, so I bought 100 shares of the 24s, and I delta um, hedged, and then also bought extra puts on the 23s. Um, and that absolutely worked this morning. Um, I think I'll probably go over it again uh, another time, but I, it's a little hard to show you my screen right now. I just uh, got a little busy this morning trying to figure out how to hedge properly um, in a good way. So um, with that, I'm going to pause and just take some questions, and we're going to try to get out of this very quickly. Are there any questions? David, do you have any questions or should we just kind of end the recording for today? Dave, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, the VIX. Oh, yeah, so the VIX is just too high right now. You really can't do much with the VIX given where it's at. At this point, you had to have hedged coming in. Um, the one, you know, the VIX at 25, if anything, um, I wouldn't necessarily sell it because you still have to get across two days, but I wouldn't necessarily buy it either because, you know, you have to get across two days. And the real challenge is that the market, even in this weakness, is not, is weak for a reason. It's not, you know, um, I would say the only place if you were looking to really buy right now that's interesting to me is defense. Because if this escalates, and, and the one that I like the best is this company called Lidos. I always pronounce them wrong. Ticker LDOS. Here, I'll show you. Um, LDOS, um, they uh, were, you know, to make things very simple, the part of um, defense that they do that's always scared me is they really, um, they do spy type stuff. So they do like, you know, I don't know another way to say it. They really do spy type stuff. I'll, 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 I'll try to be a little bit more clear on what they do, but this would be one that I would buy on its weakness. It really hasn't done anything in the last year or so. I mean, it's more or less right where, you know, so it um, in January dropped to 89 bucks, and it's just more or less going to stay there. It definitely trades cheap, but if we do have any kind of meaningful conflict, it's trading at 12 times. Um, defense could go quite well. Boeing, which I know everybody always wants to be, I'm a little less constructive because they have quite a lot of um, they have quite a lot of. Um, uh, let me see if I'm, am I still sharing my screen? I can't tell. Hold on. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, this is really awkward. Sorry. Um, so I'm not sharing my screen right now. Uh, okay, hold on. Share screen. So um, Lidos, I did this wrong. Yeah. Yeah, here's Lidos. Um, it trades at 13 times, and if you look at the chart, you'll see that it barely has moved from last year. But it's it's not a. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with this company whatsoever, as far as that goes. Um, so it is one of the cheaper within defense that I would absolutely consider, um, even in this weakness. You know, down two percent. Um, I would actually just you know in in this market. Um, with vol so high, buying options is not the smartest thing unless you really have a strong feeling on direction. So right now, there's really nothing to be done. If you you know what's what's done is done, and um, it wouldn't be quite the smartest thing to go in and try to like do something to your to your positions at these levels. Um, the only there, there is one company that I think um, is up on earnings news that I would consider shorting, and that's Kohl's. Kohl's is up 30% on um, a takeover, um, a, a takeover um, possibility. And this um, actually doesn't make sense to me because there would be no reason to purchase something at a 30%, something within retail, which still has stores. Uh, there'd be no reason to purchase it at a 30% premium. So um, even if this is doing what it's doing, this would be a candidate to just buy put spreads on um, cheaply, probably at the $55 level, right, um, right in the mid of where it was trading right before this deal was announced. That would be one that I would consider. I, it, all of that is irrelevant. Look, let me just explain it to you. Geopolitics, Olympics, none of that fucking matters, okay? <laughs> like the thing is really, they have, Russia is gonna invade um, is potentially or posturing as if it's going to invade Ukraine. And actually, Europe needs to chill out, okay? Because all you have to do, hold on, let me stop screen sharing um, for a second and just show you something that's, that um, I think people just don't understand very well. I'm not sure why anyone would report any nonsense other than this. Sorry to be a little bit rough with you guys on this. But... Um, It's not about the Olympics. It's about the fact that they don't want um, the Ukraine to join NATO because they basically are one of the major providers of oil to um, all of Europe. And um, it's not even about that. It's really about this right here. And this is why Europe cares as well and why we're just going to end up taking all the nations um, at this particular time to the brink of it. This right here is a map of oil lines that come through and Ukraine is right here, right? Okay, so, or sorry, it's right here. So you can see these are all oil and nat gas pipelines. The only other pipeline that comes across, which is why we're discussing this with, with, um, with, with um, Qatar, is this one right here. And all of that goes to essentially Central Europe and Germany, which is all about um, manufacturing for Europe. So the reason they're doing this is because Ukraine wants to join NATO and that actually massively impacts a major revenue source for Russia, which is oil and that gas. I mean, that is how Putin keeps makes his money. So and, and quite frankly, there's very little we can do about this right here. So if we're going to look, I mean, look how little stuff comes across right to to Germany on it, it just doesn't. It's like, hold on, I should probably do all of Europe map. There is a big pipeline that comes from. Um, so basically, you're piping from here. So they're taking, they're basically oil and gas mining up here. I don't know if you can see my little pointer, but at the top left next to the um, thing, there's a big oil gas field. That comes, you bring in the tanker across the North Sea and you stick it into um, Restock which basically then gives gives Germany gas. That's how, that's how, that's what this is actually all about. It's not about the Olympics. That is a red herring. It is not about some BS thing that Putin wants to do. It's really about the Ukraine joining NATO and disrupting a major revenue stream for the country of Russia. And what is most likely to happen 
is that if they if they do invade the Ukraine, is they're going to turn off that oil and redirect it towards China. That is what will happen if we keep at this silly nonsense. And there is almost no amount of oil that we can bring in to try to help Europe out. Right. We are also um, doing this IEA thing <laughs> where we're trying to, like, improve carbon fuel. We would actually have to tank it in from Texas, bring it across the Atlantic until this conflict resolution could be resolved. And although there are definitely a lot of tankers that are hanging out in the Atlantic, it's not going to compensate for the amount of oil that comes across to Ukraine. And even worse, if Russia actually invades the Ukraine, look at where they end up sitting as relates to two other big gigantic oil fields. It is it could be really bad. This is why I've always been very sensitive in discussing about the fact that right now um, earlier in the in the in the month, I was saying vol is underpriced. That's why, because that is really really disturbing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Other questions? Um, yeah, May. I was just um, the Olympics are so huge for Russia. I mean, this is their big thing. Yeah, so, it is their big thing, but it's not going to be that, relevant to this issue in Ukraine. Yeah. No, the Olympics are relevant, but the Olympics is going to be a red herring anyways because of Omicron. Um, so all of this activity has nothing to do. It really is Ukraine going back to NATO or going into NATO. It's not going to be like the Olympics. The only thing, the only net benefit or negative for the Olympics is whether or not China gets a little bit of a kicker on stimulus. But that with Ukraine doing this thing like that becomes less important by a lot as well. Um, and if anything, China's going to sit there and do absolutely donut because they are the net beneficiary if, if Russia goes into the Ukraine, because that oil is going to come to them and they have a shortage of energy right now. That's part of the reason why they're not exporting certain things like um, potassium, phosphate. Um, they're not exporting steel at this point. Um, all of those things take a lot of their energy intensive to create. And China has already done the rolling blackouts just to make sure that they can actually stimulate and fuel their own needs um, for demand. So it's it's not it's it this whole Ukraine thing isn't just oh it affects Europe or oh whatever geopolitically it's a very very big deal. So yeah, I mean I would if you own the VIX right now I would. Like to the extent that the delta, if you own them through options, to the extent that the delta has smashed upwards and you're massively overhedged, go ahead and take profits. But um, if the VIX came in again, I would just put more down until the Ukraine is resolved. Alternatively, the best hedge would be to try to buy a few defensive, uh, like literally defense stocks, not defensive stocks, right? Um, and then um, oil is it, like the, the fact that oil has declined today in price is a misunderstanding of the Biden announcement. And I understood um, from my kind of like searching around Reddit and whatever that people were suggesting that, oh, he's going to try to drive down the price of oil and gas so that Ukraine becomes less of an issue. That's just a misunderstanding of how Europe fuels itself. That doesn't make any sense. It won't it, it won't long term be any kind of meaningful impact. And then, I, you know, I know that there's more than one person out there thinking that this will resolve before the Olympics. Um, I don't think Putin lets go of Ukraine because he really it really is not in his best. Like, like out of all the crazy things that man has done, this one makes actual sense. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, any other questions or should we get back to it? I mean, in general, yeah. the companies are doing really well, um, not really well, but but it's not been that bad of an earnings season to um, justify a flat out short. I would say that if we do end up with some kind of oddity um, geopolitically, that it does bode well for the dollar, which will continue to stimulate the U.S. economy. And it also gives all of the nation's reason to ev evoke some sort of stimulant like strong fiscal policy and it resolves any concern that people have with debt because obviously people would then be geared up for a very different perspective. So I do think that for the next two to three days, really chilling out is your best bet if you're not invested. If you are invested, you'd want to hedge, but just carefully so. Um, and it would really be case by case. You'd have to kind of come find me and I'll, I'll, I'll and talk to me about what your positioning is. And I would try to help you as best I can. It's an awkward period, but definitely if you can be um, beta neutral in your in your portfolio or net short, that would be ideal. 
We just have so yeah. many companies that are reporting earnings in the next week. Aren't margins, profit margins going up? Depends. It's industry by industry, um, company by company. Within the, it, it really just depends. So, for example, um, within consumer staples, some companies absolutely got pricing through, like Procter and Gamble, but a lot of companies did not. Um, and it really, it's interesting to me because people rush into Staples as if that's a safe haven. I think your safest haven right now really is flat-out defense companies that have no commercial, that have limited to no commercial um, exposure. So, like Boeing, to me, if it rallies on defense, I would probably use that as a hedge against other defense companies that probably are better positioned to take advantage of anything that might be happening geopolitically. Um, hence, why I'm, you know, but even then, I'm not necessarily going to uh, short or aggressively go long many of the companies within that space, with the exception of maybe Lidos, which is the net beneficiary and trades cheaply. Because their spyware is a real thing. We're probably going to be going into that kind of climate for a while. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So why do you think the market is down overall so much? Lack of buyers. It's a buyer strike. Okay. So nothing it's fundamentally. Really, no, there's a, it's, it's a really a buyer strike given all of the... Um, all of the uncertainty, like there legitimately is uncertainty right now in the marketplace. And I, you know, I'd mentioned that for months that Ukraine is not being taken seriously enough as a real problem for the markets. Um, and it's not even so much that the Ukraine would somehow do something that would tank the markets. It's more, if you're a portfolio manager, there are a lot of like, hey, I should just kind of wait and see. I actually don't want to be too short going into the next few days because I do think that it could be a little funky to do so, for lack of a better way to describe it. You know. Do you think this would this can alter the Fed's decision making? Um, I don't think that it would change very much. No. Okay. Thank you, May. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to think about that one further, but at this point, I, I'm not, I'm expecting the, Fed, like, I actually think the Fed is going to, like, what, what the Fed will say is already known. Ukraine's probably more important right this minute. Um, it wasn't as important on Friday, so it was, so oddly enough, people were, I, I was talking to some folks and they were like, May, what changed from Friday to Monday then? And I was like, nothing, really. Um, I, or no, what changed from Thursday to Friday? And I was like, nothing, but what's changed from Friday to Monday is actually fairly significant in the Ukraine, for sure. Um, yeah, but I would, I, I would try to, I wouldn't be grossly short going into FOMC. Um, I would probably try to stay more neutral. Whereas on Friday I was like, I want to be grossly short. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, um, we're just getting too close to the FOMC and a lot of these companies are legitimately, um, there are some companies that have legitimately come for sale. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is down 50, 60%. Yeah. Um, I would still be bullish Activision. I don't think there's any change to that deal going through. It's, I think people are just basically trying to reallocate capital right now. And nothing changes on um, natural resources because natural resources, if they're not in demand now, they sure as hell will be if we have any kind of impending conflict going on. So what about the sanctions on Russia? Is that a big risk? I mean, does that not scare them at all? Russia? Russia's got a, you know what, if, it, if Russia, like, they would be like if we were going to turn off the tube, it would be like if Texas was going to cut the United States off of gas, right? We'd be pissed, okay? So, like, it, from Putin's perspective, this actually kind of makes sense. He's got to hold that line for a little while until he can negotiate something, until they, I mean, like, legitimately diplomacy must actually do something. Right. I mean, that, that's a big, huge pipeline. That's the that's the pipe through which most of what I mean, like, again, I'm I'm going to put the map in the discord so you can really take a look at how many BCFs are actually going through um, the Ukraine and why he really cares. Right? I don't understand that. I, 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 I agree with him using it as leverage. I mean. I think he's got time. to. We're not leaving him with a lot of moves, quite frankly. Right, but <laughs> What sanctions do we have if he if he in, invades the Ukraine? I mean, not very much. We would probably force the EU to deal with it, and then we may or may not send 
our folks over there and then we'd probably help on the technology side. Those are the major things I could see the U.S. doing, but I'm not a pol politics expert per se. Um, okay. You know, that's so so I, I don't want to try to overshoot my, you know, go too far over my skis. Um, you know, there and it, it's not um, I'm not sure what kind of answer might be helpful here. Well, I'm just I'm trying to figure out what what the risk is for Russia if they do invade. I mean, I don't think it's very much okay. like right because I mean, just look at the borders there. You know, yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a NATO thing, so he's using it all. As, I mean, he's good. He's smart for doing that, I think. Yeah, I mean, like if 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 um, like think about it this way, if he drags Europe into some kind of armed conflict right in the middle of the worst possible economy that Europe has, and he actually also has the ability to cut them off of their oil supply or cut off like a huge component of their oil supply. It's not the greatest strategic positioning for Europe. Like Europe also has pipelines that come in from Africa. They have pipelines that come in from the Middle East. But right. essentially, he's right on top, like of um, he's right on top of an area that we just left. Quite frankly, you know, so our troops aren't even there. Um, so it's not. It's it, like I don't. I I think that someone with a stronger understanding of of where precisely U.S. deployments are and and some kind of better thought process on what other countries might do if if this occurred um, is probably going to be the smarter person to answer this question. Uh, from an options perspective, the uncertainty is incredibly high right now um, as this deescalates, and I'm knocking on wood that this deescalates because I'm really. Um, not looking forward to trading a market where we have both Omicron and a potential war situation. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like that's in literally no one's best interest. That's why I would really like for Europe to chill the F out, quite frankly, if it were me, because I th just think their timing is bad. Like if they were doing this three years from now, then you would at least have the U.S. a little bit farther along and moving off of energy, uh, not fossil fuel dependency. Since we are one of the largest users of fossil fuel, that would put a lot of stress off the system. Additionally, I mean, you, you, like time is really such a beautiful thing. So to escalate this at this particular point in time, I wish they wouldn't do it, but I kind of understand it um, too, because if you think about it from Europe's perspective, if the economy actually is bad, rallying around war is one of the many ways that you get people to chill out as well. Right. Um, now, yeah. Long long term, I mean, could they say, okay, we're now not going to be as reliant on Russia for, for gas anymore. And so we're going to go, oh. we're going to north, I mean, north and Qatar, whatever, Qatar. Do you think that's a possibility? No, long -term. Long -term. no, absolutely not. I mean, long term, long, the, the, all, we all, like the whole world has to get off of fossil fuels for this conflict to truly end. There's just not enough oil um, here. Again, let me just share the screen so that you can see exactly how much oil is coming out of Russia for, for Europe to fuel Europe. Right. Hold on. Let me just share screen here. Right. So like, man, you really almost need a global map, right? So this, so there's the stands, but you're going to, it's essentially these little tiny ass pipelines here and this one, right? All the rest is coming from Russia. You see what I mean? Right. And then this big, gigantic, wide green thing. Okay. Like we cannot compensate with, for that with tankers. And these little tiny pipelines that are basically feeding from the North Sea, these right here, that might be able to get you, like these right here, that might be able to get, because what we're really trying to fuel is is here. This isn't the right map because it doesn't, we really, we it just can't be compensated for that easily. 